place where um, kids, students who are in middle school and high school come and just worship Jesus on a weekly basis. We're here every Tuesday at 6.30. Um, you can listen online if you're losing the radio signal at thelighthousefm.org. And uh, we're excited you guys are listening. Tonight we have a really special, special night. Um, Mr. Robbie King is going to bring the word. Assistant Fire Chief for Camden County, right? Awesome, cool. Um, so he's a big man on campus. He's not only large in size, but and sweet and loved. He's tall. And he's not fat at all. He's very intimidating looking. Like, I would want you to fight a fire for me. <laughs> so, oh, great. Um, and we want to give a special thanks to Ravens of Elijah, who are bringing the shepherd's pie and dessert to us tonight. Okay, so last week uh, we had a guest speaker in the house. We t mentioned him on the musical podium. If you were here last Tuesday, you heard about him. I want one person to come up and tell me something that they got out of the message, positive that you got out of the message last week, and you'll win a prize. Win a prize. Okay. You. Come in, right? And right now, there's this fabulous. Walk by faith, not by sight folder. And if you look at it in 3D with 3D glasses on, it becomes clear. Okay, what did you get from Austin? That God is kind of like my superhero. Okay. Awesome. Good job. That's, I think that was like two weeks ago, but it works. She was a little great. I know. I know. Come on, guys. You put your hands down. Other than, other than Devin. Devin's always going to volunteer for everything. <laughs> Um, but I might have prizes from way to week. So remember last week, I might have a Bible verse showing just his sacrifice, the fact that he laid his life down. So God, we just thank you so much for this opportunity. And I pray that we would see the beauty and the glory just in your in your relinquishing power, God. You could have came in, you could have demanded everyone to worship you, but instead you came and you served, God. And I pray we would have that same attitude that we wouldn't seek glory, God. We would seek to serve, we'd seek to love, God. And I pray that tonight we would just step closer to you and see you and realize how small we are, but also how loved we are. It's Je in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.
sometimes you get wrapped up in the, the, I don't even know what the word is, the, the rap of life, like going through life day after day, you forget how, you forget you're supposed to live worship, you're supposed to live that lifestyle, you're supposed to actually worship him with your doing and your loving others, and sometimes it's just hard, and this next song is called Enough, and it's about how he's more than enough, he's sufficient for us, he, he deserves everything that we give him, and sometimes we just tr treat him like he's a piece of poop, like for real, and it's just about how he's enough for us, and then we don't, we're not even enough for him.
just ask that your presence to permeate this place and just shake us up.
experienced all of your presence, God, let us be aware of it throughout our days, God, as we're going through school and things just seem really hard, and it's like, how, how can you be in this, God? How can you be here in this moment, God? But you're walking with us through every step of it, God. I pray we'd be aware, God, we would have our eyes open as Saul, as he transformed into Paul, and he was blinded for a short time, God. So whenever he was blind, that you taught him how to see through his eyes, and you finally removed the scales, God, and the world was changed. It was the same world, God, but he saw it through your eyes, Father. He saw it with your love and your compassion, God. And I pray, Lord, we would have that, that revelation. God, I just pray that you would let us be aware of you. You walk with us daily. You never leave nor forsake. I pray we would act like it. God, we'd act like you're walking with us. And then also trust in it. God, we would know that we can do all things through you, God, that you, you're more than enough, God. Just thank you so much for the night. Have your will in this place. someone don't stop um, I pray you just keep pursuing this God you don't stop pursuing this I pray we just be aware of it God that we see this loving father this creator who is desperate for us God and I pray we just be desperate for you Lord that we just want your presence in every aspect of our life bless Mr. Robbie King as he comes and just brings your word I pray that you would soften our hearts and um, I pray, Lord, that we if you convict us, God, I pray we would know that whatever you convict us, it's true. It's not something that you're just, that people are nitpicking. It's but when, you're, when your Holy Spirit falls and you want to change us, God, when you want to not discipline us, God, but you want to change us, Father, into, into your likeness, I pray, Lord, we'd realize, okay, I'm, I need to change. We need to accept that. And then start walking in it. And it's in Jesus' name that we all pray. Amen. Kinds of crazy things. But one of them is a building class. So back in 2006, in a place called Bremen, Georgia, which is outside of Atlanta, there was a hotel. And there was an explosion. There was a three-inch uh, natural gas line that ran into the laundry room. And it went down. Um, there was two people that were drowned that later died. Uh, huge response went to the, to the site immediately. And all these resources went up in there to, to help try to, to rescue them. But unfortunately, we had to use uh, canines and special equipment to be able to uh, locate them. We uh, did recover the bodies, but the insurance company was like, we need to get rid of this, this unsightly scene. So they hired a contractor to come out. Well, when we go in there to, to work, we have to provide a safe area to do the rescue or the recovery. So we bring in big old heavy wood timbers uh, to shore everything up so we can work. Well, this contractor comes in and goes, yeah, I can get this uh, hotel on the ground and then out of here to a landfill in one day. We're like, no, not really, not for this. They're like, oh, no problem. So two hours later, the, he has this fleet of heavy equipment come in. There's three track hoses, you know what a track hose is? It's a big old device that has a, a bucket or a claw at the very end of it. So, see, we learned something. <laughs> Some front end loaders and a bunch of dump trucks. He gets out there, they unload all his heavy equipment. They're, they're getting ready and they bring this track hoe out. 
He goes, we're going to start on this rebel pile where, where you all said it's so strong. He brings a track hoe up there and starts to shake it, trying to collapse it back down. He couldn't. So another track hoe comes over, and both of them in tandem are trying to shake this whole thing down to cause it to collapse, where we just worked so hard. Now, I didn't get to respond to it, but I did help in the after action review for it. Well, the contractor, nope, didn't work out like you planned. The foundation of those, uh, the foundation of that safety haven that we created was so strong that these track hoes had to come down and grab a piece by piece of all these supports to take it down. What he thought would take only eight hours took him three full days to take it apart. Now, I bring this up about that foundation, that support, because that's our walk with Christ. Because we have to have that foundation. And the only way we can have that is have their relationship with Christ is through prayer. Now, I'm going to use a couple of examples which you just heard tonight. We heard Sierra pray. We heard Brian pray. My beautiful wife prayed with me beforehand. Miss Vicky prayed with me tonight. But do you think they start praying like that just off the cuff? No. That's practice with their relationship with Jesus. And that's what I want to talk about tonight. Now, I did a couple of versions of this message, and I'm not going to stick with it very long. Like uh, Brother Robert told me just a minute ago, um, God wants me to uh, study things, not what necessarily I'm going to preach on. So deal with, uh, help me out with this one here. But the first thing I want to talk about in our foundation with Christ is, is an easy one. But it's not necessarily easy to accomplish every day. You must see your daily prayer time as a relationship with God and not just a duty. Now Christ talked a little bit about this in, in the New Testament. The Pharisees. Who remembers what, what, who they were? Anybody? Go ahead, Brian. Religious teachers, leaders. You know, the... Yeah, the religious teachers and the, and the leaders the of that time. Of the, the pastors of the day. So their job was to pray for people, to do teachings. Now, these are the folks that you'd see in the street corners that get up on their, not their soapbox, but get high up and say these very beautiful prayers, the top of their lungs, so everybody could hear it. But what Christ taught us was it wasn't, it was a duty to them. It wasn't their relationship with him. And that's what we have to work on tonight. God views prayer as our expression with Him. A personal relationship of love, intimacy, surrender, and trust. A relationship. That's what we all want, isn't it? We want it from our parents. We want it from our friends. He wants that from us. In Matthew twenty-two thirty-seven, 37, says this. <laughs> I told you I was going to ask you to read. You know how to read. It's okay, me neither. You shall love the Lord with all You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. Matthew 22, 37. Amen. Good job. Yay. Now, some key parts of that was with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. Now, does it say for five minutes? No. Not even close. Does it? So I have this beautiful wife in the back. Her name's Katrina. So you know I was going to have to talk to you, Katrina. Really? Really. <laughs> so when we were first dating a few years ago, <laughs> if I went up to her and said, honey, I think you're really important to me. Because you are, I'm going to give you five minutes a day. <laughs> or how about this one here? <laughs> honey, it's just so hard for me to spend time with you. But I'm going to force myself to do it a few minutes 
each week. Now, do you think she would have married me? Yeah, no. And, uh, yeah, no way. And I would probably still have speeches in my head where she knocked me outside my head. <laughs> Our time with God isn't a duty. If you truly love God, you want to spend time with Him. It's joyful. Just like I love spending time with my wife. It's the reason why I like spending time with them. He makes me laugh. Yeah. So what God wants is our time. I'm going to read from Luke 10, 38. Don't worry, you don't have to. You already read one, so you're, you're safe. Can I read? Yeah, Devin, you can read. <laughs> you don't want Devin to read? <laughs> My phone's resetting now. I apologize. My wife was telling me not to trust electronics. <laughs> now I see why. So we're going to be coming to talk about uh, the story of Mary and Martha. Have we heard this story before? Yes. So Luke 10, 38. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Very nice of her. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. <laughs> Have you all heard this before? Maybe with your mom. Martha, Martha, Lord answered. You are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or, only, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. What was it? Christ. Christ. That's right. So Mary and Martha both had two different uh, views on what Jesus wanted, wasn't it? Martha was a busy woman who wanted to make sure there was food, a clean house, all those things that many people want. What did Mary want? She wanted to have that relationship with Christ, sat at his feet, kept, his, kept to herself and just listened to what he had to say, what he had to share. So it's kind of funny to me that she got busted, doesn't it? And out in front of everybody. Made it into the Bible. So it must be pretty important for us to remember. So here's a truth I want to make sure everybody understands. We need much time with God before we attempt to work for God. It's so easy for people to, to join a group, come to the rock, go to a church, go to a youth group, and start serving. And it's great to serve. But right here, right now, we have to have that foundation of relationship with Him. So we can commit to Him, and He commits to us and gives us those blessings. And the second half of John 15, 5, is apart from me, Jesus, you can do nothing. So even if we're out there trying to serve, we have to have that relationship with Him. So maintain a close relationship with Jesus. You must spend time in prayer. It's crucial. If you become a power-packed Christian, you must be your prayer time as a relationship and not a chore. Prayer is a love relationship. I'm going to start deviating from what I, I wanted to, to talk about. And this is I want to make sure you understand when we can pray. When's your time to pray? Nothing. What time? When do you pray? When's your When's your special time? Where's your When is your quality time for Christ? Usually, whenever I think of it, like I'm sitting in school and somebody says something, like I, don't, I can't think of an example. Like, like, oh my God, is that the prayer you're talking about? No, that's not it. I know that's not it. Now me. I wake up and I pray. 
and I pray throughout the day. When I walk into a building, I pray for the people that are walking in behind me, the people that have walked before me. When I'm serving at my church, I pray as I pick up all the communion cups for the people who sat there, people who are about to sit there. I pray that people, when they drive by our church, they'll say, you know what? There's some, some disciples for Christ in there, and I want to go there. And I wish that for everybody's church. I wish that for all of you all. But we can pray every time. And I had a cute little clip that Devin would have laughed at. And it was nothing but OMG moments. Where people said, oh my God. And I even found one where there's a, someone looked just like you. <laughs> and was saying it too. And it was kind of comical. So I still love it. Devin, I really do. <laughs> but <clears throat> who do we pray for? Who do we pray for? We pray to Jesus. That's right. But who are we going to pray for? Who do you want to pray for? Everybody. Everybody. Oh. Yeah. Little Robbie says the same thing too. <laughs> who do you want to pray for? Took my answer. Took your answer. Come on now. Who would you want to pray for? Your dad. That's a good one. How about you? Family. Definitely need to pray for our family. We definitely need to pray for our parents. Even if they're bad parents. We still have to pray for them. What about you, Brian? My friends and acquaintances that don't go with me to church, I'm not sure about the relationship with God. Oh, that's a great one. <laughs> All right, Devin. People I hate. Now, Brother Robert in the back just got a new sermon. No, you don't want to hate That's right. I dislike her. Dislike, here we go. I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that one there. But we do want to pray for people that have wronged us. We definitely want to. We're going to talk about that a little bit more. I'm glad you brought that up. But we want to pray for people that we don't know their salvation. That's crucial. That's a great point, Brian. I'm glad you brought that up very much. Our prayer, though, is our number one defense that we have, though, against Satan. Besides the Bible, and if uh, Pastor Zane Owens was here, he'd say, that's your dagger. You always keep your dagger close to you. What else? Dagger, sword. But, um, battle axe. <laughs> the, uh, but our prayer is one of those things that's going to that's going to that's going to stop the devil in his tracks because if you're fervently praying to god you, you, do, you don't leave a crack for him to come in so when we are feeling down we pray to him he wants us to rely strictly on him and only him when we start getting in the ways that's when things get worse doesn't it or it does for me at least One of the things I wanted to, uh, to share with you, though, is how we pray. How are you taught as a small child to pray? What's the prayer? Who did you say? Hold on. Oh, yeah, here it comes. God is grace. God is good. Thank Lord, thank you for our food. Thank you, Lord, for our daily bread. Outstanding. You did good. Put it on the spot. So we, we get taught to, to pray over our food or before our food. Understand that one. But as a small child, um, how did your parents teach you to pray at bedtime? Well, not the actual prayer. How was your body positioned? On our knees, hands together, eyes closed. Why is that? That was right. So you're not playing around. You're on your knees in a submissive fashion to our King of Kings. We're being submissive to him. We're keeping our eyes closed so we're not looking at all the little things, especially your room that has all your toys. Because I know Devin like G.I. Joe with the Kung Fu grip. Right? Oh, superheroes, okay. <laughs> but our hands together in a, in a, in a prayer fashion so they're not playing with things. So you're giving all of your attention, all of our mind, 
all of our soul, all of our heart, like we just read, to Him. Now, why is that? Devin? <laughs> I got a blank look. <laughs> so, because He wants our undivided attention, He doesn't want you to think about everything else. He wants just you and Him, that time together. But there are some ways that we need to learn how to pray, don't we? On, on what we pray for. That's right. There are some things here I want to I want to talk about, and I think this is really important, especially with this age group. Apparently, when I was younger, I went to a class. Maybe one time I didn't prepare for a test, <laughs> and I was like, "Please, Lord, I know it's been a while. Um, but I need help." <laughs> I need a lot of help. Um, I don't even remember what class I'm in. There's a test in front of me. What the? Is it top of the paper? See? I think you can see my name on it. Thank you. <laughs> or what if I would have came in here unprepared? And in the car, I would have said, what did I say? Dear Heavenly Father, you're an amazing Lord that can provide all. Even this message. Please give me the words. You want me to say to these young adults? Let me be the vessel of your information and inspiration to these children. I ask this in your holiest of names. Amen. Do you think God's going to answer that prayer? Maybe, but not really. Is it? He's going to allow me to be humbled, isn't he? Because I asked the wrong prayer. He's going to let me be humbled, maybe a little embarrassed because I failed the test or was prepared for tonight by, by the embarrassment to say, you know what? Maybe you shouldn't have been playing Xbox. Maybe you shouldn't have been preparing for this message. I know, giving up Xbox. <laughs> maybe I shouldn't have taken that nap. <laughs> I know, I know. Maybe I should have been working on this message. Because he's given me, just like you, so many gifts to use. So it's crucial that we learn how to pray. Um, another one could be, Lord, I want to grow spiritually. I don't want you to use me in your kingdom. I truly want to know you. See me a revival in my home and my school. Lord, I want you to fill me with your spirit and teach me to pray with power. Hey, Brian is here. I was so impressed with him the first time I heard him on the air praying. I was like, you know what? That's a strong relationship with Christ. That's awesome. But how'd they get there? Practice. They learned. Practice, practice does make perfect. But you pray to be good at praying. It just takes that first act, that first, that first start. So the disciples were like, listen, I don't know how to pray. But you heard John the Baptist, his disciples get taught how to pray. So they went to, to Christ and said, hey, can you share a little with me? Can you tell me how to pray? So did he tell them? Yeah. Someone said yes. yes. All right, thank you. So in Luke chapter 11, <laughs> in Luke chapter 11, um, Jesus was being Jesus. What was Jesus doing? He was praying and teaching. And his disciples asked him what to do. I'm going to get, what's your name? Melissa. Melissa to read the King James Version, okay? Can you do that for me? Okay. And it came to pass that as he was... Uh, uh, as he was praying in a certain place when he seized, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done as in heaven so in earth. Give us day by day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us, up, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Outstanding. Good job. Give her a clap. Good job. 
Did you all know there's different translations of the Bible? Yeah. So sometimes if we don't understand one version, we should go to another version. It's okay. Really, I promise. So one of the next easiest versions is the NIV, which is which is much easier. Then there's the New Living Translation. I know there's some people in the air wondering. <laughs> I think that's right. They took a big sigh. <laughs> with the New Living Translation. But there's also one out there called the Amplify or the Message. And if I don't understand it, that's right. I go to the Message. And I'm going to ask, who should I ask? What's that? No, I'm not going to ask him. Will you read the Message for me? Great job. Was it a little easier to understand? Yeah? Okay. So I'm asking my beautiful assistant. She pass out. <laughs> We're passing out a, a prayer book. There's some things that are so important. I want every day that you rem have a reminder to pray and to pray about something. But it's just not the fact that you're getting a book and it says tomorrow to pray about something. There's two blank lines on there also, so you can write down something that you need to pray on or pray for. And then there's a whole blank side on the bottom. So everybody's going to get one. So as an example, I'm opening the prayer book up. And if you're listening or watching on TV and you want one, you let me know and I'll hook you up. Yeah, you're, you're on TV. That's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> on the 27th, and every day, it's going to say, pray for forgiveness for your sins. Then the second line, there's always something new there. Pray for your parents. Pray for your teacher. There is pray for your military. Pray that I may bring a dollar to the rock for an offering. The rock needs money to be able to hire great speakers. Not like me. I'm free. So if you want something better, you have to bring an offering. Parents bring an offering. There's one in here. Pray for my future spouse will be a Jesus freak. Every day, you need to pray for your future spouse. It's that important. They're out there somewhere. God's got that special person. And if they're a Jesus freak, it'd be much easier to see. There's also a couple more in there. Pray for Paul and Vicky and the Lighthouse family. We always have to look them up for prayers. But then, I listed two speakers, Jason Bear and Fee Shore. Oh, I, just, I just turned there. See? It's right there. Whoa. It's that important that we pray for our speakers. They're listening right. right now. Jason told us he listens. He listens back. So take the time to lift them up in prayer for their ministries. On the very back, as we bring this to close, is... In the name.